Hi ladies, it's Samantha. Um, recently I posted a photo of me wearing a wrap that sort of looked like a veil. And so I'm going to show you um, how I did it with this particular scarf, which is larger than most scarves. And then I'm going to also do the same technique with a pajvita. They end up looking a little bit different, but the technique is the same. So um, hopefully you can play around with it and find out what works for you and the scarves that you have. So this is actually um, a beach cover-up or sarong, whatever you want to call it. It measures about 44 inches wide and almost 74 inches long, which is pretty similar to the watercolor dream scarves from Rapunzel. Those are 38 inches wide, but you might be able um, to do a very similar look if you had a watercolor dream scarf. So I started by folding the scarf in half along the width, and then I placed it on my head with one end just a little bit longer than the other. Basically, you want the short end to be just long enough, I'm tying it in the back here, you want it just long enough to be able to wrap all the way around your head, which I didn't quite get. <laughs> That's okay, I can improvise. And then you can tuck the ties, and if you have a cool edge like this one, you can arrange that. So this is sort of the, the headband, in a way, that is now on top of the rest of the wrap. So what you're left with is this pretty long tail. And I'm going to turn so you can see this a little better. I open up the tail as wide as it'll go. And then I bring, holding it here, bring it up, sort of walk it up to the top of the wrap. Now, what I did was actually pin the veil part into your shaper with just plain straight pins for sewing. Sometimes they're called silk pins or dressmaker's pins, but they don't have a head on them. Um, the plastic, sometimes, you know, different colored uh, round balls that are on them. So this is completely plain and it completely disappears. So you can see that. Now you're left with this veil. You can bring it over one shoulder, over two shoulders, hanging back. But I do realize that Wearing pins in your wraps or on your person can be a little um, unnerving, especially if you have little children. I'm really used to it because it's a big part of historical clothing. In the 18th century, women's gowns most often fastened entirely with straight pins. So it's something I'm used to working with, but I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. So what you could do is actually tuck the veil underneath the headband made from the shorter tail and that works as well. So now I'm going to quickly take this one off and I'm going to do it with a pashmina now. So I'm not going to fold the edge on this because I want to have as much width as possible but I'm going to find that special spot where one tail is just a little bit longer than the other. You may have to play around with that to find out exactly what works. And tie it again. And wrap your band. And tuck it. And then open up the tail that will become the veil. And then at this point, you can either pin it 
um, the way I like to do, or you can tuck it. And you'll get these kind of short folds, but you can just sort of tuck them under, just arrange them nicely. I'm going to go ahead and pin it, but again, you can play around with tucking it under the band, whatever you're comfortable with. So what happens with the pashminas is because they're not as wide, it really isn't a length thing, it's how wide they are. It doesn't quite drape the same way, but I think, think it still looks attractive. It's just not quite as long, which honestly might be more practical for some people. But here's the, the veil style that I did. I can't wait to see how you guys experiment with this and put your own twist on it. And I hope it gives you some good inspiration for future wraps. All right, bye.